the uh, is in normal times, so that when the time of test comes, we're not weighed down by our attachments, so that we're ready to act uh, very quickly. This is not normal times. Once you make a difference between this is normal time and that is not going to be normal time. Once you make a separation, well, when that time hap comes, I'm going to be ready. Once you make that mistake, you will never be ready. When are you going to be ready? When you say the abnormal time, it is not what is going to happen, it is now. What is normal now? What is normal? America became normal. Brett, what other proof you need? World became normal? You know all of this, but yet people, majority, they're living their lives normally. It's not because there is not enough signs from Allah. It's because you are blind. Your hearts are dead. If you're alive, if you're not sleeping, one sign it is enough for you. One thing that happens to you, it is enough for you to tell you that this is coming from Allah. I have to wake up. One word, it is enough. Like what we said before, once you see the minaret, you understand that there is a town. You don't need a thousand words, a thousand signs. Once, it is enough. But if your heart is dead and you're not looking at that as a sign, then 1,000 signs come in front of you, you still think there's nothing there. Like I said, if only you are going to say, well, it's snowing today, there's ice everywhere, <gasps> then immediately you're going to remember Quran or Sunnah, Quran or Hadith. And you say, Hadith, crawl over ice and snow in the time of Mahdi mm, Maybe this is a test for me. I have to try to make it over ice and snow. But if you cannot even take go in your car and there's not too much there was a storm before now it's nothing the roads are cleared you cannot even do that how are you going to crawl over ice and snow that time impossible impossible you're going to make up excuse too that's okay i have bear in my heart uh, i can take it through the internet i'm connected is shaitan always gives excuses shaitan never says no he just gives you maybe Waswasa, you understand? Doubt. So these are the things that as tariqat people, you don't wait for the sky to crack open for you to understand. Everyday simple things that happen to you, you think that's not coming from Allah. It is coming from Allah. You take that as a lesson, there will be a billion lessons for you to learn from that. Believe me. It's going to be. This is how you're going to learn. And you're not going to learn if you spend majority of your time at home, not to be in the derga. You will not be able to learn. I read Sohbat, not the same. Not the same. You have to be here. But the problem is when you start separating. Oh, that is sohbat, this is life. If you're not putting a sohbat in your life, then what good is that sohbat? Some, they're listening to sohbat, they're listening every day. But still, there are so many problems with people. They cannot even control their anger and their stubbornness. When they like, they blow up. After they finish blowing up, they say, ah, I'm sorry, yeah, that wasn't me. You recognize people like that? Hmm? That they're so filled with anger and resentment, now shaitan is saying, you know, everyone is just going around saying things about you, uh, conspiring against you. You are alone. Everyone is your enemy. Shaitan will to make. Last point is Shaitan, you see, even the Shaykh is your enemy. Even the Allah is your enemy. Make you to fall into depression. That is the logic that is going to Hasha. So everything you're going to, Shaitan is saying, you know why he did that? Because of this, because he hates you, because he has a thinking, 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 
And we're saying, you want to think, you want to say, consult. Don't make sohbet with your shaitan. Don't make sohbet with your ego. Make sohbet with some of the people that you trust. Make sohbet with those who are close to the shaykh. You can make sohbet with hoja. You can consult. You don't want to. You want to do it on your own. Oh, I don't want to bother him. Again, from shaitan and your ego. I don't want to complain. I don't want to bother. You don't want to bother. You don't want to complain. The problem finished or no? It didn't. It got worse. That is coming from shaitan. It's just your ego not wanting to come. You understanding? And good people, especially, don't touch them. Should not. Because they are under certain protection. I hope you understand. We all should understand. Take it from here. Because we have to take lesson from everything that is around us. If you're not going to take lesson, read as much Quran as you want. All the Quran majority is saying is take lesson. Take lesson and take lesson from the ummah of 124,000 prophets. Whatever they did, take lesson from that. You don't want to take lesson then you can swallow the Qur'an, it's not going to give you any benefit. The shuhada of Chanakal. You think so many of them, they went to school like you and me? You think they're running to attend Islamic conferences like you or me? You think they are posting on internet, giving fatwa, giving sohbat, giving nasihat 24 hours like you and me? Yet they have Allah. And they ran to Allah. And the Prophet والسلام, is holding all of them in his jubba. Yeah, no, too much. We know so much. We talk too much. But they did. And they were happy. Don't think they were miserable going to war too. None of them were. None. They were not miserable. When we hear a little bit like that, oh, we got so none of them. They didn't think, oh, I'm about to get married, you know, why this has to happen? I'm about to get a job, why this is happening? I'm about to move, I'm about to have a life. None of them said that. In fact, that song that we're singing every time Chanakala comes, it's saying they have just been married, some of them. We're just engaged, some of us. Do you know that they were lining up to register their names to fight in that war? The war protecting the Hilafat, the war for Islam. They were not running away. They were running towards. And they were lining up for days just so that they can register. The whole university, all the students became soldiers for that war, and all of them became shaheed. They were in one battalion, and they were all finished. I believe it was Istanbul University, if I'm not wrong. And for a long time, they painted everything black in that university. There were high schools, high schools, you understand? That all their kids, they were just going to that war high school, and all of them just became shaheeds. There were mothers that they have one son, two sons, three sons, they keep sending them to that war. How are you going to have this feeling of sacrifice if you're just sitting there in your home on the day of like this and you're not even coming? Forget about coming. So many, they're not even picking up the phone to say, please make dua for us, we cannot come. Pray for us. Very few. I don't need co phone calls. Allah knows so many times I run away from them. 
But this is not whether you reach me or you don't reach me. You made that effort. Allah is shahid. Allah is witness. You made that effort to try to reach, to say, you're going to get the reward. So many become foolish and become so egotistical that when we say, don't do this, you're only harming yourself. Uh, I don't like it. Why do you have to wash us up all the time? I don't like going to Derga anymore. All we get to hear is wash up. You don't get washed up, you never be clean. You want to stay dirty? Just let me know. I'll just leave it like that. You have a relationship with Sheriff Andy? That is your relationship with Sheriff Andy. It was private between two. I'm not there. If I'm not there, I'm not responsible. Now, you have to build that relationship with each other. You have to build a relationship with me. Allah knows I have to build relationship with you, every single one of you. And I don't treat you the same, each according to your station. So now, the shahids, the very least that we can do, that war, where 253,000 you imagine, think, 253,000 young boys and men that they went with full passion, with love for the sake of Hilafat, for the sake of Islam and they finished there. That they were coming with almost nothing. They had no bread, they had no ammunition, still they were fighting and they were just going up to be shot down, going up again to be shot down. They were building a wall, you understand? to protect Hilafat, to protect Islam, to protect the Islam that we, in this nice, uh, comfortable situation, we are enjoying. They were going up, just dying and piling up one on top of another just so that they cannot pass through. There, there was a kid. His hair was red. And they were writing letters back and forth because a lot of things is documented. They were writing letters back and forth from their parents and going back and forth and this kid with the red hair, his friends were teasing him, saying, Oh mother, he was writing, please, my friends are teasing me because I have red hair because you put henna on my hair. Next time, if you're sending anyone, one of my brothers, you understand? You're saying you send one of my brothers, please don't put henna on his head because all his friends, they're going to laugh at you. The mother wrote back, saying, my dear son, don't tell me not to put henna on the hair of your brother who is going to come. You tell them, whoever is making fun of you, that in our tradition, in our village, we only put henna on three occasions. We put henna on our girls when they get married because she is going to be kurban from the family. And we put henna on the sheep, male sheep, the rams, when we're going to make the kurban. And we put henna on the hair of our young boys who are going to make kurban for themselves, for the sake of Allah, to the war. This is our tradition. Don't tell me not to do it, oh my son. The kid passed. He became shahid before the letter reached him. And his sergeant got a hold of the letter and he read it and he cried. There were so many instances. And these are real people. They have journals because if you know if you go through the military, there's a time where you're always with people and you're also always alone. And you think about what is really necessary, and what is really important. So they left a lot of writings, a lot of journals, a lot of diaries. What do you think they were writing? Huh? You think they're writing what we're writing in our journals, filled with dirtiness? filled only with desires. They were writing how happy they were to give up their life for the sake of Allah. 
they were writing and they were drawing the Zulfikar. They were writing La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. They were writing Ya Allah, O oh my Prophet, here I come to meet you soon. They didn't watch YouTube videos to come to this passion. They didn't go to conferences. They didn't go to resorts, Sufi resorts. They didn't sit with scholars to know this. They had a living, breathing, a holy heart. We must go back to that tradition, how to have a living, holy heart, to have what Shaykh Mawlana is calling Qalbun Salim. At least once a year we're going to sit and we're going to understand this. They were not doing it for nationalism. They were not doing it for their mothers or for their fathers or for their loved ones. They were doing this for Islam. We have lost that, huh? Which war that is fought since the Hilafat? Which war, which conflict that is fought since the Hilafat? It is for the sake of Allah. It is for the sake of nationalism, sake of the country, patriotism, sake of pulling up every flag except for the flag of Islam, flag of the Holy Prophet What can we do? Recite something for them. Be with them. Remember them. You remember them, they will remember you. Inshallah. May Allah forgive me and bless you. Al Fatiha. Salam alaikum. Any other?